well, he's not the only one feeling a bit spoiled today because there is a brand new operating system for a 40 year old computer. That operating system is C64 OS. We've been given the first ever retail copy to check out in this exclusive video. The computer, of course, is the C64. Welcome. Hello, chip dippers. So first, let's find out. What's in the box? Uh, it's an envelope, not a box. What's in the envelope? And we'll have a quick flick through the user guide to whet our appetite. Oh, wait. Well, there it is. And speaking of tidy packages, I should mention, of course, that this video is sponsored by PCB Way and their great quality PCBs, starting at just five bucks. Because as we all know, PCB stands for Printed Commodore Bump, doesn't it? Well, either way, let's insert our gorgeous, cute little SD card into our SD2IEC device. This is one, of course, that I converted into a Lego version. Uh, you can see that video linked up in the corner here. And it goes. And it's ready to go. Now, I've already played with C64 OS so that I can just bring you straight to all the meaty bits without further ado. Now, the first thing I will mention is it does support Jiffy DOS. Now, I have Jiffy DOS in the Easy Flash 3. Unfortunately, this is a slightly pre release version of C64 OS or should I say the first 1.0 release. So it doesn't actually quite work with uh, Jiffy DOS in the Easy Flash. Gregory Nasu, the incredibly talented developer of C64OS, knows about that. We've been chatting about it, and he's going to release a patch very soon. But if you have regular Jiffy DOS on an actual ROM, it's going to work just fine and load the OS much faster. I do, however, have Epic's Fast Load reloaded. <laughs> Good name. And if you run it, with this plugged into the back of the Commodore, it won't be quite as fast as Jiffy DOS, but it will still be much faster than without. So put that cartridge in and power on the machine. 
There we go. And we can see fast load is ready. So let's get a little directory listing going here and see what's on our disk. And you can see it's quite a succinct little uh, roll call. You then need to run the configure command. We are going to type at cd os slash settings. Now we are in the settings directory. Program we want just past us there called configure. Now loading configure and now we we'll run it. Now this is important to tell the OS all of the hardware that we have, mouse, uh, disk drive, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna go with the defaults. Display time in the menu bar, yes. Use 12 hour time. Actually just for fun, let's do 24 hour time. Blink of the seconds indicator. You're getting a taste already of how complex this might be. Wait till you see it. <laughs> I can't wait to show you. Which mouse pointer? We can choose Compact, Amiga, Windows, Mac. I'll go with Normal for now. Default mouse speed. Defaults for all of these. And here are some keyboard shortcuts for the menu bar, status bar, graphics mode, etc. Again, I'm going to go with the defaults. If you have a REU, a RAM expansion unit, you can configure here about app switching slots and using different banks of 64 kilobytes. By the way, I should mention, I could use the Ultimate 64, which I've got behind me here. Uh, this has emulation for REU, RAM expansion unit. Um, but I want to show you guys, because most of you, I think, just have a standard C64. I want to show you how it works on this. Now, this is the important bit where it talks about drivers. Real-time clock driver. Now, some SD2 IECs, rarely speaking, have a real-time clock built in. Mine doesn't, but yours might. You might have one of these other uh, real-time clock options. I'm going to hit four for none. And I'm going to hit number one because I have a 1351 mouse in port one. Actually, I'm lying. <laughs> it's a uh, Amiga 500 Mini mouse. Um, and I've got it plugged in using a Savior. This is a very cool little product uh, that can not only emulate USB mice into the joystick port type of mouse for a Commodore 64, it also allows you to load software from USB stick and connect even disk drives to the joystick port. So I'll put a link for that in the description, but that's not what this video is about. However, it is allowing me to emulate that. So again, I'll hit one. Default places, sure. Configuration complete. And now we're gonna load the OS. Load C64 OS, comma eight, because this is device eight. Loading, ready, run. You ready for this? We get a beautiful loading splash screen here. Now, crucially in this video, I'm not going to speed anything up. I want you to see, you know, really how this is. And here it is. So we are in the home screen of C64 OS. Now I want to show you around, but it's hard to know where to start. So I think what we'll do is start with the menus and uh, go through those. I can, however, point out these are essentially all icons. They're shortcuts to applications on the disk. What I will show you is you can pick them up and drag them around. So move the gallery down there, move it back up here. You can also select multiple ones by clicking and dragging as you may be used to. I can move all of those down to here and it will save this for the next reboot straight onto the SD card. Uh, you can recolor them as well. But we'll come to all of that in a moment. So first, the top left menu here, you have about this app. I'll take you through these. There you go. Gregory Nasu's app launcher version one. Year 2022, it is amazing seeing that, isn't it? This machine was 
created in 1982. I think that must be somewhat of a first uh, as far as old tech goes to get updates this late into its life. It blows my mind. Into settings now. You can see about again and themes. Let me show you a theme. So this is a sort of preview of how everything's going to look under this theme. So we could, for example, choose for selected text and toggle through the 16 available colors on a Commodore 64. So let's go with red. You can also switch the entire theme here. Uh, now it does default to daylight. I found that a little hard to read on this real CRT. It may be the issue is, you know, the way the brightness and contrasts have aged on this CRT. So I like midnight. That's essentially dark mode. Now I mentioned I'm not fast forwarding through all of this. You're seeing it in real time. It does mean we, we have a few awkward silences. Um, we'll find some things to talk about. So again, here you can choose drives. Right now it's just detecting the one drive. You can see, however, I've got a 1541 drive attached here. It's not powered on right now. Uh, you could add up to five different devices. That's how many the OS supports. However, he is quite specific that it's not designed for old disk drives. It's really designed for SD card usage. The reason for that is you maybe get one decent program onto a disk and then you'll be forever swapping disks. Whereas this, as you can see, even just on this home screen has what, eight, nine, 10 programs there. So he's very clear about it, that SD cards are the way this is intended to be used. Wouldn't have expected that in 1982. So back into settings, I will show you as well, you can pick up the window and move it around. And as you may have noticed, it jumps a block at a time. It's not smooth. The reason for that is this whole OS is so fast because it is text-based. So everything you're seeing here is a text character. There's some pet ski in use, but also he's created some of his own uh, things like the three-stripe hamburger menu. The hamburger, as they say in Australia. Don't know. Uh, mouse you can configure here. And there's all our mouse options. Now you're getting a tiny taste of how well set up this OS is. Believe me when I tell you, this is just a fraction on the surface. Look, let's change to an Amiga pointer. Let's change it to a black outline and a red inside. Now we're using an Amiga. <laughs> PC and Mac, actually quite like that. Tracking speed, left-handed, right-handed, double-click speed, test that and registered a double click. So I'm going to save out of that. Back into settings with our new mouse pointer. So, um, yeah, nice weather we're having, isn't it? The world. <laughs> okay, Wi-Fi. Quick word about Wi-Fi. It does support Wi-Fi uh, cartridges. Um, however, there's nothing actually set up in the OS yet regarding networking. So that's gonna follow in a later version. So I can't show you that, but we will for sure do a deep dive into that in a future episode. Memory. It remembers where I left the window last time, that's interesting. So here you go, here's a look at our 64 whole whopping kilobytes in use here. So this black area is free memory for running apps. This is all used by the OS and then We've got some apps open, like memory itself, perhaps. Uh, work, I'm not too sure what that is. And over here is reserved for system usage. We can leave this in the corner and it can update automatically, quickly or slowly. And here we set the date and time. So it is now 2.30, oh, 2.30 um, in the afternoon. So let's change the time here. Click on clock. There you go, you can just toggle it up to 14. And the date, of course, today, the day this video publishes 
is the 19th. So also here, you've got a watch. So you can literally just start the stopwatch, I guess that is. Pause, reset, you, you know how this goes. Timer has these nice kind of two-tone, uh, almost reflective looking, aren't they? Um, thingies, <laughs> technical term. Now I will show you this because we're here. Built into the OS is a driver or library that will play SID files, .sid something. Uh, however, there's no actual music player app yet, but the functionality is there. And I know that because at the end of my one second timer countdown, it's loading something from disk. It's playing the uh, end of timer music. So that is impressive, isn't it? Show you what else is here. It'll slow down while it's set the clock there. come out of it, it does sadly close the, uh, the music, stop it playing there. Um, but that that really impresses me because you might look at the, all of this and say, well, it's no different to what Geos does with Windows and stuff. But I haven't heard Geos playing music while you're moving a window around full screen. So that's another benefit of this text mode here. Wait, I got the date wrong. Today's the 20th. Okay. I was thinking of a a very important day yesterday that we had. This does actually also act as a, a little notepad calendar app, if you like. So I must remember today to breathe. Ah, and there you see a little uh, reminder or a little exclamation mark there. What's this do here? Looks like a TIE fighter. Okay. Yes, I shouldn't have clicked on that because it has crashed the whole system. Let me quickly reboot. Now, as we reboot here, I, I thought it was important to give you a warts and all review of this because often with my videos, I kind of chop and cut and cut out all the waiting around, but you don't want to see a sped up version of what this is really like. And you don't want to see a rose tinted version because every new program that I've ever played or tested has some kind of bug in it or, or other. I think it's important to show successes as well as failures. And we are back. Now I will say crashes are quite in, infrequent. But again, this is the first version that's come out. There's going to be a lot of people putting it through its paces. Uh, there is a, already an update mechanism on the SD card so you can download a patch and apply it to the OS without losing your settings. Okay, on with the tour. Here we've got utilities. Now this is a whole bunch of apps here. Uh, I won't go through them all, but I think it's a rite of passage when you open a new operating system for the first time to load up the calculator. That loads really quick. I would hazard a uh, guess that that's faster than uh, Geos. So we could do uh, 36, square root is 6. It is accurate, I can confirm. Back to utilities. And let's try colors. Now I said I'd come back to these app icons because look, let's select all these. We can recolor our icons make them green, purple. Uh, the reason some of them, some of the color isn't showing is because that indicates that they are currently selected. But if I want to make them, let's see, light green, 
if I deselect them, there you go. So you can actually have a lot of fun configuring your own home screen here. Speaking of home screens, let me show you. It features five desktops. So those of you used to spaces on Mac OS, for example, these are like different spaces. Uh, so they're all pre-configured with various things, but let's go to desktop five. You see also the shortcut keys indicated there, so I could press Commodore five to load that one. But here it is. And you can see it's got a kind of wallpaper. He calls that a backdrop. And what I think we'll do is we'll customize this fifth screen, this fifth uh, space, if you like, to be our own one. So actually we have to go to change backdrop in the file menu. Now it's looking on the disk here, it's gonna bring up a file browser. Uh, you can see a whole bunch of recents from when I was playing around. Um, we'll ignore those for now. And I've just clicked on the root folder here. I'm gonna go into OS. That's where all the files like backdrops and music and pictures are stored. I'm gonna go into desktop and you guessed it, backdrops. There are 25 supplied with it. They're all, you know, text-based because that's the that's how this works, but hold on, because there, it does have a graphics mode, which I'll show you in just a second. Sound wave, or oh, sound wave sounds good. So you click on it once, click select once. It'll do some thinking and loading. There you go, you can see it change. Close the file browser. Sonic experience. Beautiful. So we can now start customizing our backdrop here. Now, I don't want to skip ahead because we were going through the menus here, but uh, I think the only thing that's super interesting here is clipboard because you can copy and paste in this system. Uh, one nice thing is if when you're in the file manager, if you want to get back to a folder that you're browsing and you want to go off and find something else, you can actually copy your position in the file browser. When you're ready to go back to that folder, you hit paste and it pastes you back into where it was. And it seems to have saved my clipboard between sessions as well, because this is something I was doing yesterday. Um, we'll come to that, I think. NES Tester is for testing Nintendo joysticks. But I will show you it because it demonstrates the graphics capabilities of this OS. Obviously, it's got a nice icon here. I would like to see those icons on the actual desktop next to the text labels, but I understand, of course, that probably would slow things down and use up uh, more memory, etc. But when this is loaded, uh, although I don't have an NES gamepad that I can connect, let me show you this. It's telling us here, pull up from the bottom. <laughs> now, it's not talking about your bottom, it's talking about the screen. So look. Whoa! Now, this takes advantage of the VIC 2's uh, modes, where it can display graphics and text modes simultaneously. And this is our full graphics mode here. Uh, and of course, people are gonna be coming out with app, apps, applets, whatever you might call them, like this, um, you know, from now on until the end of time. But to exit, we go home, and it actually just reloads the app launcher. So rather than multitasking and that sitting behind, there's only 64 kilobytes of RAM here, so. I uh, forgive it that. But let's say we don't want that. We just do file scratch and it deletes it. So it's just deleting the shortcut from the desktop there. Uh, now scratch, of course, is the original terminology that the 1541 and the user guide for the 64 used. Let's open chess and I'm gonna show you some more graphics here. The interesting thing about this chess game is it doesn't, you don't play the computer. Is purely for two players in the real world who want to play a game of chess without having access to a chess board. And so you don't get bored. It has some rather pretty graphics here. And if you're ever worried that it's crashed, just keep an eye on the CPU indicator and see that it's still thinking. So here's a little blurb, tells you about some of the moves you can make. Click show board, 
And there it is again in that split screen graphics mode. And I think you can also hit Commodore left. Yeah, Commodore left arrow toggles mode. So here's your full screen graphics mode. And I can then take my prawn, stick him there, take another prawn, stick him there. And then my prawn's going to take my prawn. And now I'm beating me and I'm the winner. <laughs> you get the idea. Uh, out of full screen mode and we will quit. You can also load games, save games, etc. Um, you can see that I, I'm really happy with this because it's, it's just amazing. You have to put yourself back to 1982. I was nine years old. Would I have ever imagined this kind of thing on my little C64 where I was loading really bad games from tape that I bought from W.H. Smith's for £1.99? No, I wouldn't. I'm just, I'm just in love with this. There is also an archiver. Uh, there's a shortcut here. I'll just open it up to show you. It allows you to create essentially zip files in, in the Commodore 64 uh, car.car format. You can create an installer. You can include the prog file. You choose your input and output up here where what you want to compress and where you want it to compress it to and then you'll hit start. It can take a while, so we won't do that today, but at least you can see that it's there. Now, you may be wondering, we've scratched an alias from the desktop, how do we add an alias back? So we do file, add alias, And here we go. Now, you can't add documents per se. Um, what we can do is add any of the apps or little programs and utilities that come with the OS. So let's say we go into utilities and we want to add a calendar, there it is, to that desktop. So we hit select, it's now adding it. Close the file browser and there is our new shortcut. But we can put it anywhere that we want. So instead of the Sonic experience, let's have the today experience. And of course, we could change the color again of that. And double clicking it, we'll just load our little calendar. We could even add some diary entries. Today, I had Frosties for breakfast. That's how my diary was when I was a kid. Very simple stuff. There it is. And let's see if it's remembered our memo. There it is. Breathe. Now, I hope that as I'm peeling away the layers of the onion, retro recipes uh, joke there, uh, that is C64 OS, you're, you're getting the impression that this isn't just a kind of novelty. Um, that's the Dungeons and Dragons uh, dice roller. You can also copy things between desktops. So I could copy today. So if I were to select that, I could copy that alias over to desktop three, for example. And if I hit Commodore three, it will now load desktop three from the SD. There it is. Uh, and you can see here, I used a different backdrop here. This is a Darth Vader quote. You can arrange things again as you like. We'll go back to our one that we've been customizing. It is your destiny. Join me. Sorry. <clears throat> peak lets you peek, I think, at the, basically the memory addresses, like the peak command would. Uh, you could, I suppose, in theory, oh, you can't poke, so you couldn't hack the OS, but you can peek, not poke. <laughs> Last thing I want to show you on this particular screen is gallery. We've still got some really cool stuff coming up, but I was talking about graphics modes. This is our graphics viewer and it comes with a whole bunch of uh, preloaded images so if I open people I like to open people <laughs> um, that was their stomach in case you're wondering uh, it's now browsing and see we haven't crashed because this is still ticking away 
And this has Emma Roberts' DuckDuckGo image. Would you know it? You can scroll up and there's our picture of Julia Roberts' niece. As she worked with Julia Roberts on uh, Notting Hill. I mean, th four different scenes, uh, usually in the background, but I got to shake hands with her at the wedding, spoilers, at the end. Haven't washed this hand since. Anyway, so this says it is the USS Enterprise and yes, it is. That's beautiful, actually. A lot of dithering going on. Looks better on a CRT. I think you get the picture. See what I did there? There we go. Slideshow. No, scroll down, slideshow, manual. Whew, I made it. Go home. There we go. There it is. And there is also a, a full file manager. Now, this is another thing Geos didn't really do because from C64S, you can, you can partition SD cards, for example. You can copy and duplicate files, all sorts of file manager functions. I think with Geos, they basically ran out of memory and couldn't add those things, even though it had nice icons for the drives, you couldn't do as much with them. This it gives you various tabs here. So you, if you're used to Mac OS or Windows, where you can have multiple tabs open to copy and paste between, do the same thing here. So I could, for example, uh, go to tab two, take our chess program, file, copy two, and then it will copy that file to whatever is in tab three to that folder. We hit start, it begins the copy process. And it's copied that whole bundle. You notice there are multiple files. Chess is actually a bundle. Similar again to Mac OS bundles or a zip file on Windows. Uh, and we should see it in tab three. That file has been essentially duplicated. But now let's really push the limits of the Commodore 64. Have you ever seen a Commodore 64 do dynamic resizing of window panes? What about horizontal scrolling of text? We can even collapse the devices menu here. And if I open up the utilities and go to our memory analyzer, we can actually run the memory utility over the top of this program, the file manager. And with a bit of luck, you'll be able to see the memory positions changing. Look just here, and there you go. So now you can see File Manager is actually multitasking with the memory utility. Cool. So that's our File Manager in, in brief here. But you haven't seen one of the coolest things yet. You might be wondering, well, we've got all those things on the desktop, but they are just, you know, they're the built-in things. It's its own thing in a way. What if, what if you want to extend outwards and load games and programs that you've amassed over the last 40 years? Well, you can do that too. Let's say we want to add a brand new game. Let's say Jungle Joe. That's one of the ones we are reviewing in the news app 64, by the way. How do you add it? Well, you can't do add alias yet. He's working on that. What we're actually going to do is quit to basic. See how simple that was. So firstly, I've changed into the folder where I want to create the program alias. And then I'm going to load the prog aliases creator. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Come on. Prog alias. Loading. There it is. So, source device. Device 8 is always our default drive. Launch, same device. Device has partitions. I do know this has partitions because, as I said, you can partition SD cards. And if you put this in a Mac or PC, you'll actually see two drives load up. So, yes but our game is going to be in partition number one. Does it have, is it basic? So we go with no. Sure, yes. Joyport one, usually it's only Joyport two, so we do Joyport two. Is it a plain file? That's a PRG. 
or is it a disk image? Now, I think that's a D64. And you can also make a swap list of multiple D64s. For now, we're just going to keep it simple, plain file. And the path, so games. I seem to remember I stored it in the games folder. So let's try that. And the name of the actual game I want to load is jungle joe.prog. And then what name do we want to give our alias? In other words, what would be on the desktop? Let's go with jungle Cho like that. It says ready. So let's reboot. Obviously, this is going to get much easier when he makes a version of that in the OS. But even then, you only have to do it once, and then it's created. So if you are so minded, you could create a whole desktop environment with all your favorite programs, games, and always boot into this. And that raises an interesting point. Would you actually use this as a daily driver, as your main desktop for your Commodore every time you turn it on? Or would you, is it more like a proof of concept and just a bit of fun in itself? I'd be interested to know what you think about that. So let me know in the comments. But for now, we can now finally add an alias. So it should have saved it in that folder that we changed into. We did the CD into the prog aliases folder. And I think we go into OS. That's where we saved it. Prog aliases. And there is, there's one I made earlier and there's the one we just made. Select that. And I think it should have added it to our desktop. There it is, Jungle Joe. Pride of place at the top. Let's uh, change its color. That's saved. That's going to be there no matter what we do. Double click. And you should exit out of the OS. Oh yeah, it does ask you to confirm once. Um, maybe nice to not do that because I, I'd love it to be just seamless. You just double click and go. But here it is, it's now loading Jungle Joe from SD card, launched from the desktop of a Commodore 64 operating system that is clearly much more versatile than GEOS. And I'm quite sure someone's gonna come out with word processor for it, uh, paint program for it and those kind of things as well. I mean, if you think about the first time Windows 1.0 came out, there wasn't a whole load of stuff for it. And I really hope this catches on. It's never going to be as popular as Windows, but it is at least running on uh, Microsoft Basic version 2.0, kind of. Still loading here because this is a full, you know, full modern game. But while it loads, yes, I would love for you guys to comment and see if you agree. You know, are you going to use this as your everyday OS on your Commodore? That means we should probably talk about price as well. It starts at 59 Canadian dollars. And for that, you get what you saw me unbox and uh, the SD card in there as well. Um, and there is a, a more advanced version of it as well. It's a few dollars more. I think that's exactly the right price, actually. And if this game loads, I think for our review here, I'm kind of blown away, actually. Um, I've only ever given one rating of five chips out of five. In, uh, in the four years we've been doing this. I can't give it five because it it does have a few crashes. But if this game runs, I am gonna give it four and a half chips out of five because I think the achievement and the amount of work that's gone into this over more than two years is just phenomenal. So let's see. Yes, it gets four and a half chips out of five. Well, I'll leave you with the music of Jungle Joe and all I have left to say is thank you to Gregory for giving us this exclusive look at C64 OS. Thanks for watching, subscribe and support below, and cheerio. Put you down now. Not, not put him down. <laughs>